that's it we are recording now okay all right well welcome everyone here is my little uh, sous chef assistant elisa my name is valentine and today we're gonna make an apple pie. an apple pie or an apple galette we call it a galette because it's just kind of different from a pie it doesn't have like the two dough on top of each other it's a flat can of pie and then we pile the apple in the middle and then we put the side back uh, on it okay so uh, just to uh, go through the ingredients before we get started if you didn't get your ingredients already uh, first of all we turn on the oven at 400 degrees uh, for cooking a pie and then for the pie dough we have here a cup and a quarter of flour so that's all-purpose flour we have eight tablespoon of butter cold butter and we cut it in small pieces like this uh, so eight tablespoon that comes to about 115 grams uh, if you have a scale and it's easier for you to measure or it's half a cup of butter okay so it must be cold and cut in small pieces it will be easier to mix then we have some cold water we're going to use a quarter cup of the cold water we have a tablespoon of sugar and just a little bit of salt we're going to use a quarter teaspoon of salt okay so elisa is going to start mixing the dough and while she's mixing the dough i'm going to cut the apple so if you have somebody that can um help you with while you do that you can have somebody that's peeling and cutting the apples while you do the dough we already started to peel our apples uh, but then if you haven't got started you can ask uh, help from your parents or your siblings and somebody can stop peeling while you're making your dough so see what elisa is doing in a bowl that's a little bit larger than the amount of uh, uh, flour that you have you can put all of your cold butter in there you can also add the sugar right now so you can put your tablespoon so one tablespoon of sugar there you go and then just a quarter teaspoon of salt so you can put all of that together into the bowl all right there you go and then what uh elisa is gonna do is that you're actually gonna squish the butter in between your finger and into the flour and you keep doing that until it gets nice and crumbly okay so you just have to uh, keep working that until you have kind of like a sandy type of texture so it takes a little bit of time mostly when the butter is cold but the reason why we have the butter cold it's so that it doesn't start melting in your hands right away when you touch it. So it does help that it's cold, even if it takes a little bit longer, okay? So while Elisa is working on that, I'm gonna stop cutting my apples there. So when you have peeled your apples, you can put them on the cutting tray there. Let me check for you a question there. Uh, you put uh, just a tablespoon of sugar in the dough. And the rest of the sugar is going to be for the filling okay so yes the ingredients for the filling so we have about four apples depending on how big are your apples our apples are pretty small so we use four of them but if they are large maybe three or even two will be enough and then for the toppings we also have a little extra butter okay so we're gonna add uh, about four tablespoons of butter for the top and then we will have about a quarter cup of sugar. You can use brown sugar or white sugar, if it is fine. I like the brown sugar with my apples, but you can use regular sugar, that's fine. And then the cinnamon, okay? So those are the extra ingredients that we're gonna use after. So just leave that on the side, all right? So for cutting your apples, you can cut them however you want. It really doesn't matter. What I like about uh, doing a galette is that it has a rustic look, so you can really make it look however you want. You can make some thin slices or you can make some cubes, however you want. I like to make some slices, so I cut in two and then in two again. And then each of my quarter, I'm cutting that in four again, okay? So pretty much each, each apple would give me 16 slices, if that makes sense. So you cut in two and in two and in two again. That's just to give you an idea, but really you can do, like I said, you can do whatever you want for the cutting. What's gonna end up happening is that we're gonna pile all of our apple in the middle 
Uh, so it really doesn't matter. You can make it look pretty by layering your slices, or you can just do a big pile of apple right on the middle. Okay. I'm gonna use another plate. Oh, I can use that for the apples once they're cut. Could you please let us see what is happening on the table? Um, everything is there. There is nothing else on the side. On the table there, that's just my extra ingredient for after. So there is the apple, sugar, and cinnamon, and the extra butter. So those are ingredients that we're going to use after for the filling. Okay, so that's why I keep it separate on the table there. All right. What are you doing there with your flour? Good. So see how Lisa is doing? She's just keep on squishing those little pieces of butter into the flour until it kind of uh, resembles like some sand, or like a sandy texture. So you have to try to get rid of all the big pieces of flour by uh, you know, crushing them in between your fingers and mixing into the flour. Is it getting there yet? Yeah. So it's it's a good uh, project to uh, to do as a teamwork, right? Because you can have somebody doing the apples while somebody's doing the dough. If you want to prepare the apple in advance, you can do that. Uh, that's when you will use your lemon juice. Um, you can spread a little bit of lemon juice on top of your apple as you go, so that they don't start becoming too gone, right? Because if you if you uh, if you just uh, cut them and let it be, then you just want to turn it around. All right. Almost done with the prep work. We can only see your faces, not the table. I don't know. Uh, like the video that I'm seeing, we can see the whole table. Is there anybody else who has a problem where you cannot see what's going on? Or everybody's okay seeing what's going on? If somebody can reply to let me know whether you can see it all or you all have a problem, we can see the table. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. I think it's Anna Chen. Anna, I'm really sorry if you cannot see all of um, everything that's happening, but it might be a setting on your computer so that you can see the whole thing. You might have to um, increase the image so that it's a uh, wide screen so that you can see everything because um, if over participant can see everything, then uh, that's unfortunately not something I can fix on my side. All right. Uh, sorry, I missed the first part. Do you put the flour with the butter? Yes. Okay, so when you have, the first part was to mix the flour and the butter together. That's what Elisa is doing. And then you crush it in between your hands like this until the flour and the butter is all mixed together and it looks like sand. So Elisa is pretty much done with mixing like that. So you want to uh, show them what that looks like now? So that looks like this. See, it looks like a very sandy texture now, and we don't have any big pieces of butter now. It really looks like a sand. You can have small pieces of butter, that's fine, you know, like this, but you don't want to have large chunk of it, okay? So that's, a, yeah, Louis is there with us. Hi. <laughs> okay, good. Well, Elisa, done a great job with this. Now it's time to add the water. Okay, so be careful with the water. Don't add too much water. I know it's very um, tempting to add a lot of water, but we really need just a quarter of a cup. So you measure a quarter cup of the water. So go ahead. You want to measure in that? Okay. And then you can add about half of it first. Okay. And then with your finger, you just kind of like, uh, you know, scramble the water everywhere so that it's not like, one big wet pile in the middle, okay? And so you do that again with your finger where you make everything sandy again so that the water goes everywhere. And then once you've done that and you don't feel a big wet pile in the middle, then you can add the rest of the water. But you don't wanna to add too much water, like a quarter cup should be enough because if you add more than that, then your dough is gonna be very sticky. And I know that at first it's gonna feel kind of dry and you're gonna feel very tempted to add more, but just hold on a little bit because the more you mix it, the more your dough is gonna kind of bind and 
get together, okay? So, all right, so Elisa is like really uh, kneading the dough. You don't, don't want to knead too, too much dough because we're not making bread, so we don't want the dough to be too elastic, but just enough so that the water gets into the flour, okay? So you pretty much keep mixing like this until you have a nice ball of dough. If that's easier, you can put everything on the countertop too. Do you want to just put everything on? There we go. Because like this, you guys can see better, and then we get everything out of the bowl. All right. So see what Elisa is doing now is that instead of adding more water, because it does look a little bit dry, right? There is things there. Instead of adding more water, we're actually pushing all of the flour into the dough, and then it's going to eventually come together into a nice ball of dough. Resist putting too much water. That's what I'm saying. A quarter cup should really be enough. Now, if you really feel too dry, you can add a little bit, but just add a tiny, tiny bit at a time. It might be that um, you added a little bit too much flour, or maybe your flour is different than ours. So if it feels really too dry, then add a little bit, but just a tiny bit at a time. Okay. So now we want to just form a nice ball of dough, okay? And of course, the class today is about just half an hour, so we're going to work pretty fast. But uh, if you have the time, the best is to do the dough and let it rest for like about an hour before you roll it. Because when you let it rest, the dough has time to relax a little bit, and then it will be easier to roll. But since we want to do that quite kind of fast, we're going to roll it pretty soon, okay? So let's make some room here. So we're going to be rolling soon. Okay, and before you get started at rolling, you want to have a little bit of extra flour on hand, right? Okay. Okay, that's good. Good job. Okay. So then how it looks like. So this is how the dough looks like. It's not perfectly smooth, but that's fine. You don't want to knead it too much again, because if you knead it too much, then it's going to be like bread, it's going to be too elastic, okay? So just leave it like that. And like I said, if you're not in a rush and you want to do your pie later, you can just uh, put a plastic wrap on top and uh, just rest it in the fridge for about an hour, and then you go back to it. But now we're going to get going and just roll our dough. So you put lots of flour on the counter. Oh, look, flour everywhere. <laughs> and then we're going to put our dough in there rolling pin, okay? And then we wanna try to roll that as round as possible. So a little bit like this, then you turn your dough, or you can turn the rolling pin, and try to make a nice round out of it. So again, the size is really up to you. You can do it as big as you want. I recommend that you roll it out to about 11 inches because you wanna have extra, uh, extra dough on the side because the, the side are going to be flat back on top of the pastry. So 11 inches is nice because once you hand your dough and you flat back the side, you're going to end up with a pie that's about 9 inches. Okay, So approximately to give you an idea. You don't want to roll it too thin because it's going to be really hard to, uh, to work with. Otherwise. And then if it gets sticky, just add a little bit more flour. Once in a while, hold on a second. You want to make sure to lift your dough out of the counter and make sure it doesn't stick. And don't wait until the end to do that because if it sticks now, then it's going to be impossible to lift out of the counter. So if it starts to be a little sticky, then just stop and add a little bit of flour underneath your dough, okay, before you continue. Because if you keep rolling, it's going to keep getting stickier and stickier. So just add a little bit more flour and then. Once in a while, you turn your dough around, and uh, that's when you see whether it's getting sticky or not. All right. So see how the dough is kind of resisting a little bit? Sometimes you try to roll it, but then it's kind of like bouncing back on itself, and it has that stretchy thing going on. That's because we didn't rest the dough. So if you take the time to rest the dough, then you won't fight with your dough so much. It would be easier to roll. But that's okay. We're going to get to it. We're just in a rush to finish on pie so we'll make it happen okay let's see if i have the beer in there
How big is this one? Let's have an idea. Uh, that's almost 11 inches already. We can do it a little bit longer, a little bit larger, I mean, because uh, you can do it a little bit larger and then cut the side really nicely. So you can do it bigger and then with a knife after you can just go around and um, make it really nice and you see we, can, we have the sides there but are not so uh, clean. So you can make it just a little bit bigger and then with a knife you go around and make it look nice. So if you have a really large plate that will be about that size, you can actually put a plate on top and cut around. Uh, but I don't think we have Unless we use You can try to find something in your kitchen that will be about that size. Let's see. Oh yeah, there you go. You can use a pot, a, a lid for a pot. Or you can use a large plate. Is that good? Okay. So we can put that on top, either a large plate or a pot lid anything like this and then with a little knife we can cut all around so that our dough is nice and clean oh you can actually do like that you don't have to cut so far into it so oh, you go all the way around if you don't find a pot lid or a, a plate that's big enough that's okay just uh, cut around as best as you can it's just to make it look there you go and then you can Mm -hmm. You can make a mini pie with that too, or you can make some decoration that you're going to add on top. Okay, so now before we put our apples on the dough, it's very important that you move that dough onto your baking tray where you're going to bake it. So we're using a baking tray with parchment paper. You don't really need the parchment paper, you can just add some more flour on your tray. You don't have parchment. So let's see, I showed you a little trick to move your dough over. Can I just borrow your rolling pin for a second? <laughs> I just want to show you, like if you want to transfer your dough from uh, the table to, uh, to uh, the baking tray, you can roll it like this around your rolling pin to lift it without breaking it. And then, there you go. You just let go like this on your baking tray. So now, to assemble the pie, once again, it's really free form, so you guys can do whatever you want. If you cut like just a bunch of little dice of apple, you can just pile them right into the middle. If you cut slices like this one, then you can do a pattern. So you will start from the middle like that. Elisa is making an extra mini pie on the side here with the leftover. And then you can go around and build your pattern of apple all the way around. So you can really go as you wish with the decor. But remember that the sides are going to be flat back on top of your pies. So the middle is, it's kind of nice to have a middle that looks pretty. Uh, but the inside, I mean, the, the edges there. Are not going to be shown so it's no big deal if you don't do something very artistic it's still going to be really good there you go so you just keep going with your apples are you doing a mini pie do you do it in the exact same thing with a mini one Oh yeah, and then if you want to add some berries, you can do the same thing with just berries. So you can skip the apples all together and just put some berries. Or you can do a mix, add like a bunch of berries on top of your apples if you want. Uh, you can use the same recipe with other fruits like pears or apricots, peaches, and you can do that for savory pie as well. Um, I like to do like roasted vegetables, so I'll do the I'll, I'll roast the vegetable in advance and then put it on the pie and then roast I mean cook everything together again after. 
So there is lots of different things you can do once you know the recipe for that. Okay. So make sure that you still have a good edge everywhere around. So your edge should be at least one inch or a inch and a half all the way around your fruits, okay? So make sure you still have an edge all the way around. Okay, so there you go. So I have a little bit extra apple, but that's pretty much how it looks like. So it's just a big stack of apple that I put in the middle, all right? Um, I didn't put the, I didn't put the sugar, I didn't put the lemon because we had just cut the apples. You don't need the lemon if you cut the uh, apples just fresh and they don't have time to uh, turn brown, you don't need the lemon. The lemon is really there to keep the apples from turning brown. So let's say if you prepare uh, your apples in advance, so if you cut them in advance uh, before you start the recipe, then you toss them into some lemons so that they don't turn brown. But otherwise you can skip the lemon. And then for the, uh, the sugar, you can just add them on top of the apples right away. So if you want, you could toss the apple into the lemon and the sugar before you add them there. But I prefer to add my apples just clean like that and then add the sugar on top because it's less messy and it's easier to handle when they are not covered in sugar. Okay. Lots of sugar. Well, we have about a quarter cup of sugar, so it's not too much sugar. So now you can spread your sugar all over the top. So again, you can use brown sugar or white sugar. Doesn't really matter. I like brown sugar when I'm doing apples with cinnamon, but it will be fine with white sugar as well. I'm taking my sugar. So see, Elisa is doing the exact same thing in the mini version here with her leftover dough and leftover apple. And you can do them in tiny ones as well. You can do like individuals. So this one makes like one large pie that will be good for like up to six people, but you can just um, do little individual one. All right, there you go. Make sure that all the sugar is in the middle. I'm just gonna rinse my hand with you. Okay. And then the cinnamon. So cinnamon, we say about half of a teaspoon, but again, that's up to you. If you like a lot of cinnamon, you can do a full teaspoon. It's very hard to open this jar. Let's see. There you go. So you're gonna sprinkle your cinnamon. Mm, all over the top. Pie. You're making another one. You have enough dough. Yeah. Sure. I'm gonna have so much pie. Here we go. So you sprinkle you the, butter? the butter on the top. So the left uh, the leftover butter, the one that we're gonna use for the top, it's coming. It's right there. So once you have done all of your apple, the sugar, the cinnamon, then you can put those little pieces of extra butter all over the top. So the butter like this is gonna melt on top of the apple while it's cooking and it's gonna make them really nice and soft and delicious. So you just spread your little pieces of butter everywhere on the top. Just like that. Okay. Need some water for me. There you go. Now I have enough. Okay. So now we're pretty much done with putting our pie together. So now for the side, you want to just uh, take the side, the extra side here of uh, the dough, and just, um, I never have the right word for that, but you just flap it back on top of your, on the side of your pie. So you take a side like this, just bring it to the side and hold it with your hand. At first, you need to hold it while you bring the rest. And then it's eventually it's gonna hold itself up together nicely. And then you go around there, grab the side here. So see how there is like a nice straight line here. So now I take that corner here and then I bring that up 
while folding this side. So now see I have a fold of dough and then I turn around like this and same thing, I see a straight line. There is a corner here, I grab that corner and then I fold it up, okay? And then you keep going like this. Is the cold butter or no more butter? For the butter that you put on top, it doesn't really matter if it's cold or room temperature because it's gonna melt anyway, so. Okay, so again, you're folding a straight line. You grab the corner here and then you fold that corner over. And then you keep doing that all around your pie. Okay, so straight, grab the corner, fold it over. There you go. Almost there. Okay. I think one last one. So at the end, you should have one last uh, fold to do. So you're gonna have two lines coming together like this, and then you can just grab whatever dough you have left and just bring it on top like that. And then once you finish going all around, you can press a little bit with your hand on the dough on the side so that it sticks well. Okay. And there we go. This is how it looks like right now. Okay. So depending on how much uh, room you had on the side of your dough, you might have more, you might have less. Um, you might actually go a little bit higher on the top. That's no problem at all. Like I said, the cool thing about this recipe, the galette, is that it's meant to look rustic. So there is no rule about it. You can make more fold if you want. You can make less fold. You can make it higher. You can make it lower. Uh, you can do whatever you want with your apple or your fruit in the middle. You can really make it look however you want. That's, that's the cool thing about it. It's very free form, right? And then now the touching, uh, the little uh, finishing touch. So there's a few things you can do. You can brush the dough with a little bit of milk and then sprinkle some extra sugar um, over the dough here. So that when you're gonna bite into that dough, it's gonna be kind of crispy with sugar. Um, you don't have to, otherwise you can also use an egg wash. So an egg wash is just one egg yolk where you add a tablespoon of uh, milk, you mix that, and then you use that. You can use the egg wash if you want your dough to be really nice and brown, okay? But if you don't want the dough to be too brown, you can just brush it with milk. That will give it just a, a very light golden color. So we have just a little bit of milk here with a, with a brush. You can do that with your hand if you don't have a brush. You can just have the milk on your hand like this and just brush it slightly with, the, with your finger. But the cool thing with the milk too is that it helps for your sugar to stick on the dough. So you like to have something wet so that your extra sugar will stick on there. So now if you have some coarse sugar, use that because that will be even more crispy. I don't have coarse sugar right now in the kitchen, so we're gonna use just regular white granulated sugar. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of the white sugar on the side like this, where I brushed a bit. It's gonna make it nice and sweet and crispy. Oh, look at that, you make mini, 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 mini pie. That's so cute. <laughs> so you can make mini, mini, mini pie with your leftover dough. I have another one. There we go. Okay. And that's it. It's ready to go. So, your oven, if you missed it at the beginning, should be at 400 degrees, okay? So you're gonna pop that into the oven. And depending on how fast is your oven, you can definitely use the convection uh, fan if you have that option because it will cook more evenly and faster. Depending on how your oven works because everybody's oven is different, it might be more time or less time. I will say at least half an hour at 400 uh, because you want the dough underneath to be nice and seared so that it's not soft because 
the apples are going to release some juice when they cook, right? Uh, so that's why you want to have a high temperature for quite a long time so that the other leaf of the dough doesn't get soggy. So one way to know if your uh, pie is ready is to use a spatula and try to lift uh, with the spatula, you try to lift it after 30 minutes. When you lift it, if you see that the dough underneath is actually still soft, then it's not cooked yet. So just put it back longer. You should be able to lift the whole galette without the bottom uh, looking soft. That's how you know it's cooked. Okay, so just cook it as long as, it, as you need for the bottom to not be soft. If the top is getting too brown and the bottom is not cooked yet, you can cover the top with an aluminum paper so that you can continue cooking without having the top browning too much, okay? So you can continue the cooking and then that would preserve your top from burning. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So obviously we're not gonna stay with you for the cooking time because it will last at least another half hour to 45 minutes. Uh, but like I say, your, the best indication for your pie is just you have to be able to lift it without the bottom being soft, okay? So, now we are done on our side. We're just gonna keep working with our leftovers and all that. I'm gonna put this guy into the oven. And if you guys have any question, go ahead. Let me know all your questions now. I'd be happy to uh, enter that. How long do we put the pie in the oven to start? So I will say at least half an hour to start, okay? Uh, it will need at least half an hour to be to be baked. Even if your oven is really high, um, half an hour is the minimum. So after half an hour, you can stop test it and see if the bottom is cooked. But usually I cook mine for 40, 45 minutes. So at least half an hour. Do you think salted butter will be okay to use for the dough? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you can definitely use salted butter, but then uh, skip the salt. Don't add any extra salt. But yeah, that will definitely work. Uh, salted butter is always good for pie dough. I like it. It's not already sorted. It would be fine for sure. All right. Um, I'm trying to think of other things to, to tell you. So that same recipe of the dough, you can use that to make uh, a double pie as well, right? So you will just double the recipe and uh, split it in two. You can use that for the bottom and you can use the other one to cover for the top. So you can use the exact same recipe for regular apple pie. Okay, uh, can you do whole wheat for the dough? You, I've never done a hundred percent whole wheat because uh, I like my dough to be kind of uh, nice and soft. I find the whole wheat makes things a little bit more dense. Uh, so maybe you could try 50-50 whole wheat and white flour to start and then see how, it, see how it's like first. Um, but to be honest, I've never done uh, dough with 100% whole wheat. So I don't want to tell you it's going to be okay. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I will do a 50 50 uh, to start just to, just to be sure. Uh, if you don't have all purpose flour, you could use bread flour, uh, but don't use pastry flour because pastry flour doesn't have enough gluten, so it doesn't hold itself uh, good enough. Uh, if you want to do gluten free, then the best is to do the exact same recipe and use like an actual gluten-free flour mix. You know, the one that you can switch cup for cup. That would be your best bet. But yeah, that's pretty much that for the middle. And Elisa is still uh, walking away <laughs> with, her, <laughs> with her leftover dough. So now we have um, apples that are incrusted into the dough. So you're gonna cook that just flat? Or you're gonna roll it? She's getting really creative. She actually smacked her pieces of apple into the dough and then she rolled it. Hey, why not? We can try. That's, that's what's fun about having extra dough, right? Is you can just try some other stuff. Oh, and now you're cutting it in slices. Mm -hmm. So you're doing mini rolls. Sure, why not? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna grab a tray. Okay, so if you're like Elisa and you're playing around with the dough and making mini pies, 
and you want to make sure that um, you're going to put the mini pies on a separate tray because they're going to cook for less time than the big one, right? So you want to be able to remove them uh, before the big pies because the smaller they are, the faster they cook, right? So if you have small creation like this, then just put them on a separate tray and then maybe watch the cooking for like 20 minutes and see. So what are you doing here, Lisa? Are you doing pie rolls? Do you have a name for that? Cinnamon pie. Cinnamon pie rolls. We've never done it before, so we're gonna see how that works out. So pretty much you use the leftover dough. Uh, she pressed apples into that dough and she rolled it with the, the apple pressed in it. And then she rolled it like a little, um, just like we do cinnamon buns, she rolled the dough on itself and then she cut it in slices and cover it with extra sugar, right? Mm -hmm. And extra cinnamon. There you go. So, I don't know. We'll see how that turns out. We try to take a picture and share it on Facebook, right? Okay, you guys, well, that's it for us. So, I hope you had fun and um, I recorded the video this time because I know last time it didn't work. So. I'll, uh, I'll try to send you that recording after. And I will also send you a link to the actual recipe so you can do it again. And um, I hope you had fun. Enjoy your pie. And uh, send me some picture if you have any picture of your pie. I love to see them and then I can share them on Facebook if you don't mind. And um, yeah, I hope you're having a great time with us. We'll be back again next week. We do this every week. We haven't uh, decided what to bake next week, but if you have any ideas, you can always let us know. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's how we make an apple galette. And if you have any question, I'll stick around for five more minutes and you guys can keep asking. Thank you so much. You say goodbye? It's actually the end of the class. Bye. <laughs> All right, let's put that into the oven. Alina thinks Elisa is a scientist baker. Thank you. <laughs> so now she just makes some cinnamon in the sugar and she's dipping the leftover apple slices in cinnamon sugar. Clever girl. Way to eat your veggies, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming and I'm so happy to uh, see that we have friends from all the way to California that are joining us today. Um, it's the cool thing about doing online classes, right? We don't get that when we're doing uh, actual classes. It's kind of sad that we don't have you with us, but at the same time it's kind of fun that we have friends from all over the place that can join us. So Thank you so much for joining us. All right, we'll see you again next week. Bye, guys. Enjoy the weekend. <laughs> Louise, say bye, Elisa. Bye, right. bye, Lou. If you want, let's see. I can try to unmute people, but I can't see. Okay. 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 Now unmute you guys because we have some friends there. We just wanted to say hi. I don't know if there is. Any. Oh, Louise is already gone. Oh. Ashley, you still here? I know I'm. I'm. I'm responding I'm you're, responding at, you're responding to somebody. Oh, how do I leave? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good night. Good, night. good afternoon. Good night. Almost. Bye bye. Goodbye.